Oh, hey, Doomers around the world. My name is Reagan. Today's August 21st, and introductions aside, I wanted to go through two articles, one from much long ago and one more recently um, from the corporate paid media outlet, The Guardian. Um, the primary reason I'm doing this is to cite sources of what was said by whom. Uh, one of these individuals I highly respect. And I'm also doing this on the, on the understanding that there's a large chunk of my viewership that understands that the Arctic ice is basically non-existent. It's just slush right now, which is why we're already seeing temperature weather extremes around the world. Tonight, flash floods turning roads into rivers across the southwest. This school bus stranded and teetering in Arizona. Nearly 30 kids taken to the safety of other vehicles through fast moving water. Just extreme weather events, just increasing, uh, you know, yeah, breaking records all the time. And then it, how it coincides with the fall of democracy or the republic, this experiment from 13 original colonies. So both of these are, like I said, from The Guardian. And I'm going to start with the more recent one first. Regarding the content I've been publishing lately about my observations of the divide that's present. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. In our nation, uh, I felt like this was... It's an interview with ousted Republican. When I heard what from the man sitting next to me yeah. and saw the video of him saying, I just need 11,000 votes. If I did that, yeah. or if the county supervisor did that to the county recorder, you're yeah. not going to just do that and walk away. I mean, that's, you'd be, you'd be that's serious. You'd be prosecuted. Well, it's yeah. serious. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, how do you explain that away? Go find me 11,000 votes so I can win this. Uh, he reflects on Trump democracy in America. Quote, the place has lost its mind. Um, this is from Rusty Ra Bowers, and now they're asking me to... Um, Pay, and I'm not. This sounds exactly like Nero. I took European history in college and how these emperors, Roman Empire emperors would oust people. I mean, it's like almost textbook example of this happening, re history repeating itself. And he just lost power in Arizona to David Farnsworth, who made an unusual pitch to voters. I'm quoting the article. The 2020 presidential had not only been stolen from Trump, he said, it was satanically snatched by the devil himself. Whoa. So he was ousted. And then in Bauer's case, his assailants in the Arizona Republican Party wanted to punish him because he was steadfastly refusing to do their and Trump's bidding. He had declined to use his power as leader of the House to invoke an arcane Arizonian law whose text has never been found that would allow the legislator to cast out the will of 3.4 million voters who had handed victory to Joe Biden and switched outcome unilaterally to Trump. Bowers has a word for that kind of thinking. The thought that if you don't do what we like, then we'll just get rid of you and march on and do it ourselves, that to me is fascism. Say what you will about Noam Chomsky, but he seems to understand the predicament really well that we're in. That is that is outright fascism. Um, and he would have knowledge on that that story that train has left the station there is no let's deal with the rhetoric at this point i do think we have to have serious conversations around preparing for actual violence uh people keep saying a civil war is coming i would say a civil war is here and i don't mean to be hyperbolic we can look at what has happened just in the past week alone since all this has happened we've had two people try to declare war with fbi field offices i don't think at this point we're going to all pack up our bags and go home and sing kumbaya the, another one from the guardian i'm pulling this from a few years Years ago. This is from 2018. And the individual name is Professor Mayor Hillman. And they're quoting what he has to say, which I think is just wisdom I take. He's 91 years old. He's a British architect and town planner and senior fellow emeritus since 1992 at the Poly Policy Studies Institute, University of Westminster, where he worked for at least 30 years. I am 87 years old, and this is the last and most important advice I will ever give. I have alarming information to share with you. Nothing, but nothing is more urgent 
my generation is responsible for the most devastating predicament that our world has ever faced. I'm deeply sorry to tell you that your generation, young people, is going to have to cope with the catastrophic consequences. Climate change is now out of control and its disastrous outcomes are exponential and irreversible. A growing proportion of the world's population is already experiencing degraded lives. Societal chaos is approaching and the demise of most wildlife species is well underway. The people in charge, elected government officials, are not prepared to deal with the nightmare scenario that is unfolding. They have no plans to ensure your future and that of the planet. All right, I respect them. He says, quote, we're doomed. Mayor Hillman on the climate reality no one else will dare to mention. That's the headline as it reads. The 86-year-old, well, when this was written, social scientist says accepting the impending end of most life on Earth might be the very thing that it needs to help us prolong it. Start with these words, guys. Doom. Quote, we're doomed, says Mayor Hillman with such a beaming smile that it takes a moment for the words to sink in. Quote, the outcome is death. And it's the end of most life on Earth, be on planet, because we're so dependent on the burning of fossil fuels. There are no means of reversing the process, which is melting the polar ice caps, and very few appear to be prepared to say so. Hillman, an 86-year-old social scientist and senior fellow institute, does say so. His bleak forecast of the consequences of runaway climate change, he says without fanfare, in his, quote, last will and testament. His life intervention in public life, I'm not, quote, I'm not going to write anymore because there's nothing more that can be said. He says, when I first hear him speak at the stunned audience at the University of East Anglia late last year, when they met at his converted coach house in London, his classic Dawes racer was parked, hopefully in the hallway, a stroke and triple bypass mean he is currently forbidden from cycling. Hillman is anxious. We are not sidetracked by his best known research, which challenged the simmer supremacy of the car. Quote, with doom ahead, making the case for cycling as the primary mode of transportation is almost irrelevant. We've got to stop burning fossil fuels. So many aspects of life depend on fossil fuels, except for music and love and education and happiness. These things, which hardly use fossil fuels, are what we must focus on. Hillman is amazed that our thinking rarely stretches beyond 2100. This is what I find so extraordinary when scientists warn that the temperature could rise by 5C or 8C. What? And stop there? What legacies are we leaving for future generations? In the early 21st century, we did as good as nothing in response to climate change. Our children and grandchildren are going to be extraordinarily critical. Skipping ahead. Although he's not flown for more than 20 years as part of a personal commitment to reducing carbon emissions, he is now scornful He is now scornful of individual action, which he describes as good as futile. By the same logic, saying Hillman national action is irrelevant. Quote, because British contribution is minute. Even if the government were to go, go to zero carbon, it would make almost no difference. Says Hillman, the world's population must globally move to zero emissions across agriculture, air travel, shipping, and heating homes, every aspect of our com economy, and reducing and to reduce our human population too. Can it be done without the collapse of civilization? Quote, I don't think so, says Hillman. Quote, can you see everyone in democracy volunteering to give up flying? Can you see the majority of the population becoming vegan? Can you see the majority of agreeing to restrict the size of their families? Hillman doubts that the human ingenuity can find a fix and that there's no evidence that greenhouse gases can be safely buried. But if we adapt to a future with less, focusing Hillman's love and music, it might be good for us. Quote, and who is we? Quote, asks Hillman with a typically impish smile. Okay, quote, wealthy people will do better to adapt, but the world's population will head to regions of the planet, such as Northern Europe, which will be temporarily spared the effects of climate change. I don't know about that. How are these things, how are these regions going to respond? We see it now. Migrants will be prevented from arriving. Will we let them drown? I'm skipping ahead here. Hillman accuses all kinds of leaders, from religious leaders to scientists to politicians, of failing to honestly discuss what we move to move must do to move to zero carbon emissions. Quote, I don't think they can they can because society isn't organized to enable them to do so. What have I been talking about like the past few months on this channel? Political parties, exactly that. We we don't talk to each we're, our society isn't organized for democracy. 
a functioning democracy. Political parties focus on jobs and GDP depending on the burning of fossil fuels. There you go. Energy is everything. Without hope goes the tr truism. We will give up. And yet optimism about the future is wishful thinking, says Hellman. He believes that accepting that our civilization is doomed can make humanity rather like an individual who recognizes he is terminally ill. Such pe people rarely go on a disastrous binge. Instead, they do all they can to prolong their lives. That is a major point I try to stress on this channel. In fact, it still says on my headline, group therapy for those that know the end is coming. You have to, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. And I totally agree with my subscriber on my last comment. Jeff said, My name is Jeff. Sometimes depression or terminal illness will cause, cause you to seek for answers. Like, because you become, you know, that search for becoming conscious. Alan Watts talked about it, I watched that. Can civilization prolong its life until the end of the century? Quote, depends on what we are prepared to do. He fears it will be a long time before we take proportionate action to stop climate, climate calamity. S standing in the way is capitalism. Can you imagine the airline industry, global airline industry being dismantled when hundreds of new runways are being right now all over the world? For real, they just keep building around here. It's almost as if we're deliberately attempting to defy nature. We're doing the reverse of what we should be doing, with everybody, everybody's silent acquiescence and nobody's batting an eyelid. Some powerful words from Professor Mayor Hellman. I had to share these two articles. They were very coincident with the comment stream lately on how we're just going to see a, a firestorm of traumatic events in the next two years. The Arctic is basically gone. All right, hit like and subscribe, prolong your life, maximize your day. Enjoy every last drop of it, every last drop of that meat sauce. Okay, I'll talk to you later. See you guys.